so it is the morning after surgery and I'm feeling a lot less out of it um, emotionally it's kind of like sunk in and it's I just feel like it's really hitting me but I'm trying not to um, I'm trying to be really positive but I know that you should go with the flow of your emotions <laughs> I have no tears left. I've cried it all out. My eyes are so puffy. Um, I just feel really hollow inside. So I just wanted to briefly update you guys. Um, just in case I missed anything yesterday. I was really out of it. So basically, um, I'm meant to take it really light today and the next week. And that means no cooking, no cleaning. <laughs> and... I can't drive in the car. Um, we are going this afternoon to pick up some things from the florist. Um, and I did order a little plaque, like a wooden sign with a quote on it. <laughs> um, these are just what we decided to do with the baby. Um, I want to tell you like a little, I guess it's not really funny, but if you don't laugh, you'll cry. So when we thought I had passed the baby through, it was like a tiny clot, tissue clot, like it was about 20 centimeters. I was convinced it was the baby. To me, it looked at the, like the baby. I literally analyzed it for like four hours and showed every one who's close to me and they thought it was a baby too. Um, we actually buried the baby at the time in our peace lily pot plant because that was something that resonated with us and I thought it was perfect because the peace lily has a beautiful name and it also grows a white flower. But then we got the ultrasound and realized that the baby was still tucked up in my womb and didn't want to go and didn't travel down any further, which is bittersweet because it meant that we still had that little bit longer time with the baby and it's just like we both weren't ready to depart. So in a way I felt very defeated because we literally buried this tissue. but. You know, that's going to be really nutrient dense for plants, so we're just going to leave it. But then when we were deciding on the DNC, I was talking to the midwife and they, this is not the funny part by the way, they were bringing up a few issues that I never thought about. And I just don't know if I should mention them here because, um, to me it was quite traumatic, but again, I want to really be informative so I'm gonna say this in the lightest way possible but if you are triggered by <laughs> death and dealing with deceased and all that I definitely am then I would recommend skipping this part <clears throat> but basically the midwife and they have to tell you and she was the most loveliest midwife ever but they have to tell you this so in Australia in Queensland in particular. I'm not sure what it's like in other countries, but you have to fill out this form and it's release of your baby under 20 weeks. Um, so when they give you that form, because this is something we were leaning towards doing, when they give you that form, they have to go through all the things revolving around taking your baby home. Um, so, one of them is disposing of the baby correctly because of infectious disease. So you have to wear gloves and you have to um, wash your hands thoroughly and just do all the correct hygiene practices, which for me, that's not a problem. The thing that I never thought about, which I just couldn't get past was I really, really hate saying this because it's something really awful and I just, 
I'm still traumatized when she said this. Um, there is a risk that vermins and rats can get there, can get to the products and it can be really traumatic if you haven't buried deep enough. They do suggest burying the baby in the container and not looking inside because it's very different from what we expect. Which I knew about that part but I didn't know about vermins and rats and scavenger animals. I, it's just not something that I think about. So when they told me that, I just, I couldn't. Like all my plans for a little, a little intimate ceremony just went out the window. Um, we weren't comfortable. Like I just wanted to know what happens at the clinic if we decided not to take the baby home. Um, and when I spoke to the gynecologist, they said that all remains get cremated, which to me was the best option. Um, we still are going to do our own little ceremony at home, but, you know, given the information that I was given, that was the best for our family. Um, and I just want to put it out there that I, this was like one of my biggest concerns. I was literally so torn on this and if you watch the start of the miscarriage journey i literally mentioned that i have no idea what happens i didn't know if you flushed the baby down the toilet obviously this is if you miscarriage at home um if you collect the baby in a pad um scoop the baby out like these are all things that when you are going through a miscarriage you don't really like it's not something you just think about i had no idea until i um started going through all this i do just want to say that if you are going through this whatever you choose is okay you know for some people this is very traumatic and they want to just have nothing to do with that and that's okay and it's also okay if you want to have your own little ritual or burial or whatever whatever you choose don't feel guilty about it um just know that it's okay with whatever choice because this is like such a hard a hard thing to go through and there's not much guidance and you know, you may think you've chosen something and then find out more information and decide to go with another option and that's okay too and I I was really tossing up whether to share um, what we decided to do but I think it's important to show the true journey especially because, you know, I was literally questioning this from the beginning and it's something as parent, as a person who goes through a miscarriage, it's something that you have to deal with. And I haven't seen anyone talk about the behind the scenes of how, um, how you go about this. Because no one wants to talk about morbid stuff and I don't want to talk about morbid stuff. And it makes me so uncomfortable but, you know, there's nothing worse than going through this alone and not having guidance and I really really hope that if you are going through this that you have amazing healthcare providers that give you information so you and your partner can choose the best decision for your family 
and the decision that will help you move forward.